Hey guys, so I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Um, for Christmas last year we bought the four year old a craft box of making your own dinosaur pins and magnets. Um, unfortunately, I didn't read the fact that it says six plus in the box. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> got a bad chest. Uh, and if you hear any noises, I do apologise, um, they're working on the train tracks outside. Now with this, it's a glow in the dark mold of paint dinosaur. We have a dinosaur event coming up next week, so I figured that we I would make some of the dinosaurs, um, dinosaur badges, so that we can all wear a dinosaur pin to the dinosaur event. And at the same time, it means that we actually actually get to dinosaurs because this has been literally in the kitchen now for about a year, almost. Okay. So, let's go into the box, let's adjust the camera, I do apologise, that's just the animals running around. There we go, let's go into the box. Anyway, this says, mould and paint, adorable plaster fridge magnets and badges, they are great gifts for friends and family, it's a glow kit. Okay, so, inside we have this little bag with all of the bits and pieces in it, and instruction manual. Okay, I think I'm going to need my glasses for this. So, first things first, let's read the instructions. Uh, so, this one, it looks like it's like all different languages with warning written on it. I don't think we need to worry about that one. This one says, warning, safety for use of plaster powder. Um, plaster powder providing this kit is a kind of calcium sulfate the material is safe for intended use however it is recommended that you wash your hands after the project is done if you have any known skill allergies you should first seek your physician's advice before using the kit in case of any accidental ingestion consult a physician please call your local health centre or our product distributors as listed in the package for further information and then it mentions first aid that if you wash it, if you wash it, if you swallow it, wash your mouth out with water and seek medical help. Same if it goes in your eyes. Um, so we'll flip over now because the instructions are on the back. Mold and paint instructions, please read safety. Uh, the mix in the plaster. Your project may contain more than one bag of plaster powder. Oh yeah, it's got two in it. Um, 100 grams or three and a half ounces. The following instructions are for mixing one bag of plaster at a time. Prepare a mixing bowl with a smooth inside surface, a stirrer and a glass of water of approximately 50 to 70 millilitres, 1.7 to 2.4 fluid ounces. Cut open the bag of plaster powder and pour into the mixing bowl. Start adding water. Watch the condition of the plaster paste and add the water bit by bit. Do not pour too much water in at once as they may make the plaster mixture too runny for moulding. Stir the mixture gently while you are pouring the water. Depending on the conditions of a bag of plaster, will normally become a smooth paste after approximately 50 to 70 millilitres of water is mixed in with it. Be reminded again not to stir the plaster for too long as it will start to set once water is mixed with it. Uh, Moulding. Place the mould on a level surface. Pour the plaster mixture into the cavities gently. Agitate the mould to get rid of any air bubbles. If your plaster mix is mixed from one bag of plaster as instructed above, you may not be able to fill in all cavities. Just leave those unfilled for the next bag of plaster moulding. There is sufficient plaster to finish the project. If pins are included in your kit, gently place the pins on the plaster mixture. If string is included in your kit for hanging, which we don't have so it's not relevant. Um, leave the plaster set. This will take approximately 60 to 90 minutes and will release some warmth at room temperature. Prepare a piece of soft cloth on the table. Once the plaster is fully hardened, gently press the mould from behind so the hardened plaster releases onto the cloth prepared. Uh, you may start painting the hardened plaster when it, is still, when it is still moist. However, for best results, it's recommended to wait until the plaster is completely dry. Um, best to leave overnight. Mm, I don't know if I'll be able to leave it overnight because um, animals... Use your own colour scheme as re or refer to the illustrations shown on the package for ideas for the follow the colour mixing guide below to produce more colours. Some of the following guides may not apply to your kit if the required colours are not included. Green, yellow, blue, blue, yeah, all that. 
If glow paint is included in your kit, after the moulded pieces have been painted with the original colours, highlight some of the details with the glow paint. The details will glow in the dark like magic, expose your creatures to room light or torchlight for a minute, turn off the light and watch them glow like magic. Uh, apply magnets. Wait until the plaster has fully hardened and is completely dry. The magnet may not stick firmly to on a most moist surface. Check if the back is smooth. If not, ask an adult to polish the back with sandpaper. Cut the magnetic strip into pieces, approximately 18mm by 25mm in size. Peel off the back in and stick firmly on the back of the hardened plaster. Okay, I'm going to leave that to the side for further reference. And I'm going to go and get a bowl and a stirrer. I think I might have one, but I will be right back. Okay, I'm back with the stirrer, which is an old chopstick. I don't have a mixing bowl I can use for this, so I'm using an old, an old jug that has a smooth inside, and I've got another jug with seven, about 70 millilitres of water. So, let's start opening this bag of goodies. Okay, so can I... Uh, I just you. That's it. That's better. Okay. So let's open this bag. Okay. So there's the there's the mold with the dinosaurs. They have a Parasaurolophus, Triceratops, a Raptor, a Tyrannosaurus, a Brachiosaur, and a Stegosaur. Okay. That's the glow paint, and that's glow paint. We're not going to need that until much later the pins. Um, unfortunately there's only two pins so we might only be able to do yeah we might only be able to do two of them. That's fine because the girls can wear them. And then there's the rest. There's the magnetic strip, the paintbrush and the paints. <coughs> and here we have the two bags of plaster. Okay. So we'll only use one bag, we'll do some more another time. So we're going to take the bag of plaster now. I don't know if I can even open this. I mean I know they made it childproof but... They have to make it adult proof as well. Okay, I'm gonna quickly grab the scissors. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I definitely can't get into that. So we'll just cut the top off with a pair of meat scissors. And so it says, um, place it, no, 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 mix in the plaster. Your project may contain blah, blah, blah. Mix the bowl with smooth, with smooth inside. Pour into the bowl and start adding water. Fine quality plaster. Okay. Ooh, it looks nice. It's like grey colour. That's weird. I thought it looked white in the bag, but it's, no, it's more grey. So slowly start. And pour in, in, start adding the water, but mix each time, okay? Hmm. This reminds me of cement. Mixing, mixing, mixing. Uh, watch the condition of the pasta and add water a bit. Do not pour too much water. In. It doesn't say exactly how much. 
Um, right, it does say how much water you need. Whoops, please tell me I didn't put too much in. But that wasn't pourable just now. I do have bubbles in it, so... Um... It's very condition of the bag pasta, I don't know if smooth paste after about a smooth paste. That's roughly what I got. Okay. So what dinosaurs are we going to put it in? We'll see how many of them we can make. Mm. It's looking like it's not going to actually pour, which is annoying. Mm. It's not going to pour. I'm going to have to grab a spoon. Annoying that I can't get it to pour. It would have been easier if it poured out, but apparently it's not going to pour out. So I'm going to spoon it out and into. So let's go with a brachiosaur. Triceratops. T-Rex. Oops. Well, the Parasaurolophus is a bit hard to fill. Yeah, it's gone outside of the mould, but I think that'll be okay because I can take the edges off once it's set. I 
don't have sandpaper, but I do have a nail file. So I might end up using that. Right, now let's have this spike back a minute. Make sure we poke in to get all of the areas filled. Just make sure that they're definitely filled that side. Yeah, definitely filled that side. Hopefully this will work now. So I'm wondering is if can I slide the stick up and out to flatten them out a bit on the top. Some of these feel like they're already starting to set. Yeah, they are. Okay. And they say they take a while to set, don't they? About an hour to an hour and a half. Okay. Um, pins. Yeah, the issue is that for the pin ones, they need to be flat. So I need scrapes. No, it's already started to set. Okay, can't. That's fine. Um, what I'm going to do is pick two of the best ones for the pins. With my scissors. Oh, there they are. Um, you've got to set them in the plaster, so I'm going to go with Stego. That's the first one. And Parasaurolophus. That's the second. There we go. And all we've got to do now is leave them to the side. I'm going to put them on this piece of paper that has all the warnings in different languages. And we will be back once they've set. Okay, so we'll be back in about an hour, hour and a half. We'll see how it goes. And then we can sort out the backs, smooth them all out, whatever we need to do. Be back soon. Okay, so they are now dry. They feel dry. That was still a bit pliable, but... Anyway, yep, yeah, these are ready to be appended out. So apparently you just push on the bottom and they should pop out. There we go. There's the brachiosaur. There's the raptor. There's the Triceratops. Hmm, his horn looks weird. There's the T-Rex. Oh, the Paris are off is stuck. There's a Parasaurolophus. That's the one with the bad with the pen on the back of it. And whoop, that came out a bit abruptly. There's the Stego with the pen on the back. Like as we found out just now, there's only two pins, so these are gonna be the ones that I'm going to paint for the girls. But um we do need to like slim the back of the other ones down a bit. So I'm going to use this old cheese knife to uh, get rid of the lumps at the back so that I can put the magnets on the back of the other ones. Okay. I'm also going to use it to shape the bits that have on the edge. Oh, it's everywhere. 
and we'll shape the bits from where the um, edge of the mould has uh, made it a bit rough. We just scratch the rough edges away. There we go. That looks better. Taking the rough edges away on that one. We're going to do the same with all of the other ones. so we can go between his feet there we go now we need to uh, like I said with the other one we need to flatten the back not quite flat on the back of that one. Again, still not really, still not really flat with that. There we go, that's better. T-Rex, haven't I? Yeah, I have, but I need to flatten him just a touch more on the back there. Especially where the magnet's going to go. Okay, so that's those two. And then we have the Brachiosaur. we got to do the same with the Brachiosaur.
finally we've got A flat here, yeah? area here now where the magnet will go let's tidy up the edges tidied up. Now we're on to the triceratops. tidied up as well. Now let's make sure there's a flat area on the back of him for the magnet to attach to. There we go, nice flat area for the magnet to fall on. Now these still need to dry out for the magnets, they're still a bit tacky on the back. Right, now we're on to the badges. So I don't need to scratch the back off those ones because they've already got the um, pins attached. I might have to take the sharp edges off. Just because I don't want them to stick into the girls when they're wearing them. edges like we did with all the others. Nicely tidied up there as well. Okay, I can now remove that. <laughs> I 
look everywhere. But they are now all tailored. Oh, hold on. No, that one's not. I need to take a little bit more of that one bit away. There we go. Okay. Right. So, that's done out of the tub. Rub all of that onto the tape, onto the floor. Right. Now I'm going to point you down to the table. There we go. We have these little uh, paints. of magnet. This little brush that has its own little plastic lid on it. Okay, so we're not going to worry about the ones that are being turned into magnets just yet. So we've got to decide what colour we want to do for So I'm going to say I'm going to do a red crest. Paro. If I can get into the paint pot, that is. Okay, so we'll do a red crest on the parasol office. Stego's back horns. We're going to do Stego's horns red as well. I think we'll do a bit of green on Paro as well. There we go. So we'll do a green body on Paro Swallowfus. Make sure we get into all of the gaps.
go. Usually fully coat it. Yes, like that. No, oh, I missed his toes. Duh. Need to paint his toesies. There we go. And his nose. I need to turn that around so I can do the last bit of his tail where my hand was. And we'll do his. We'll do his back stripes in a moment. Okay, so we're going to close up the green paint. Go back into the red. To re make sure we get his... Uh, we paint over his stripe to make it nice and bright. Well, okay, oops. Um, right. So anyway, we've uh, touched up his uh, his red on his n on the top there, on his little uh, crest. We've got the red for the Stegos back plate. Go. Make sure we fully cover the edges. Not that. <coughs> fully cover. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> fully cover the edges all the way down, like that. There we go. Let's wipe off that now. Now, what colour shall I do the body of the stego? Hmm. I think blue. I think we'll have a blue stego. You can do a blue stego, can't you? I think you can do whatever colour you want, can't you? So, let's do the body of the stego blue. Make sure we fully coat the plaster. Let's get all of the gaps. Let's try. I went over the red dome. Be alright. Get the blue all over it on his feet. Just like that. Okay, pop that one down to dry. Brush. Open the yellow and do the last bit of the of the Parasaurolophus in yellow.
just like that. There we are. Okay. Now they need to dry. Before they do, I need the black to be opened. So I can attach an eye to each of the dinos. There we go. Give them a cute little eye. There we go. So there we have the Stegosaurus. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we have the Stegosaurus and the Parasaurolophus. Once they've dried, we will be able to put the um, the glow paint. And according to this in the according to the instructions, you need to choose bits of the dinosaur to paint. But I think there should be enough there to be able to paint the whole lot of them. Like fully painted all over and it, the whole dinosaur should be able to glow. At least that's my plan. So for now we need to let that dry. And I will be back soon. Okay so while they are drying I am going to paint uh, the, mag the ones for magnets and then leave them to dry so they all dry out so that we can then attach the magnets so let's have a look there we go down it goes <laughs> right so I brought in a bit of water while I've uh, been waiting for the other ones to dry so that I can clean the brush a bit easier okay so the first one up we're going to do raptor now, Raptor is going to be a mixture of green and perhaps a different colour. So let's mix some colours together. Okay. Um, let's open the white. Mix the white and the green together just to make it a bit of a different colour green. So yeah, we have like a minty green for this one. There we go. Make sure we get right into all the gaps. between his toeses. Some of the little gaps are actually quite hard to get into with the brush. And 
nice feet. Now I've done the bottom of him, I should be able to leave him there to dry now. tiny bit more green under his neck. I just realised that's not fully covered under there. There we go. Try and just touch up the little gaps that I've missed. There we go. The plaster seems to be eating this uh, paint. Okay, so now we're going to go on with Brachiosaur. Now Brachio has this little like crest on the top, so I'm going to do that red. Brachio's little crest on the top of his head is going to be red. And I'm going to do his little feet in red as well. You got a little red feet. Okay. So, what color should I do this brachio? Um, if I take some red. You know what, rather than putting on paper, how about the paper on this instead? Because the paper seems to be sucking in really badly. There you go, that's better. Bit of the red. Touch green. Made like this little rust cover of it. The rust color will be ideal for Triceratops's horns. We're gonna put a bit of white in that now as well. See a little bit more white in that. So we're gonna do a pinky coloured brachiosaur.
got pink and red brachiosaur. Okay, now we did start the triceratops with the brown coloured horns. But uh, let's see what colour I can make for his body. So we're going to go in with a bit of yellow. if I mix a bit of blue with it. It's made a different type of colour green, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So you got this like khaki colour green for his body. There we go. Right, let's put him down to dry now as well. Okay, the last one now is the T-Rex. So, what colour are we going to do for T-Rex? We've got pink, we've got two different types of green, three different types of green. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, red. Do a brownish purple coloured T Rex. There we go.
go. And there is the T-Rex. The brownish purple T-Rex. Okay. Right. So these now to all need to fully dry. And then I can put the glow paint over the top of them. And uh, see if they glow in the dark. Oh wait, no, I need the black one open because I haven't put the eyes on the dinosaurs. Let's put the eyes on the dinosaur. I go for the T-Rex. I go for the Triceratops. I go for the Brachio. And an eyeball for the raptor. There we go. All the dinosaurs now have eyeballs. Right. I'm going to say it shouldn't be long before these are dry. Do you know what? That, that one feels like it's almost dry. But it needs to be fully dry before I can uh, paint it with the other stuff. So I'm just going to leave them there now and wait for them to dry. Once they're fully dry, I will then be able to go over with the glow paint and stick the magnets on the back, which are by here. I need one, two, three. I need four of them to be cut. One, two, three. There we go. There's the four magnets all cut ready. The magnets and the blue paint can stay over there. And we will be back soon, as soon as they dry. Okay, so I have just put the glow paint into my old silicone cupcake holder. They're now dry enough to paint with the glow paint. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm going to go right the way over the whole parasol uh, badge. So there's a whole dinosaur glows in the dark. Okay, so that's the parasol done. I'm going to do the whole stego as well. There we go. I think it dries clear. I hope it dries clear because that's got a lot of white on it otherwise. Right, we're on to the triceratops now. Here we go. All the way over here.
barbecue. Yeah, you're getting all to the gap. Get all the gaps, that's it. Ooh, dropped him upside down. Okay. And again, I'm going to have to touch him up because I just dropped him twice now. Okay. And last but not last of all now, T Rex. There we go. Okay. There's the glowing dark paint on now. I'm going to save this bit by putting a little baggie on it. Once they're dry, I will then be able to put the magnets on them. But now we've got to wait a couple of hours for this to dry and then we can stick the magnets on. I'll be back soon. Okay, so now that they're dry enough to turn over, I can now turn them over and attach the magnets to the back. There we go. Press firmly. The magnet doesn't want to stick to the back of him. Oh no. Not sticking to him. I think they're still the the back of them is still a bit too tacky for them to stick to. Um and his paint came off. I'm gonna have to redo his paint. Or at least just patch him up a bit. Yeah, this one's gonna have a few spots of different colour on him. He's not going to be an all one colour dinosaur. It would be Triceratops had the nicest colour, wouldn't it? Okay, uh, I can't get the magnets to stick, so um, not quite sure what I'm going to do about that. Yeah, give him a bit of a touch. 
touch up on them around the neck. Right, okay. Well, that is the badges done. As you can see, we have Stego all nice and shiny with a pin on the back. We have Parasaurolophus all nice and shiny with a pin on the back. We have Triceratops, T Rex, Brachiosaur, and Raptor. Um, so I'm going to attempt to glue them another time. Only because the magnets don't seem to be sticking even though they're 100% dry. Well, thank you for joining me for this video. It was a bit different so that we could get these badges made ready for next week. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Good night. Hey guys, so, um, but today, oh no, here we go. You going to say hello? Oh, come on. You say hello to the camera? You say hello to the camera? You say hello to the camera? No. Mmm. Mmm, thank you very much. Oh, right. Okay.